Hi, what's up YouTube? Today I'm just going to show you my customized trolling motor speed controller. I decided to go this route because the customized controller is far more smaller than the original trolling motor head. It took me roughly an hour to complete this project, but it was so worth it. You just have to stay really organized with all the wires, make sure you buy all the correct supplies, and it's just kind of trial and error. If you would like to check out the best deals on all the supplies that it took to make this project possible, then definitely check out the description below. For this setup, all you have to do is just run the cables for your positive and negative terminals, from the original trolling motor head which connect right here to this power center that I have. Then you have also wires that go straight up to the trolling motor itself so you can control the different speeds. The very first thing that I would do is take a picture or video what the whole layout looks like so you have something to reference to go back to if you get lost because you need to know where each cable goes back to. The second thing that I did was cut all the wires and replace each of them with a 7 foot extension and each wire requires two connectors. Once I got all the wires connected, it was just a matter of removing the actual switch from the trolling motor and cutting off the handle. And I just had to situate everything and kind of play around with the junction box and lay everything out so everything fits nice and snug, but it doesn't touch or rub too much. So this is what the switch looks like, and what I did was I cut a little hole on the top so I can place the switch head right through it. Here's what everything looks like when it's all wired up and connected. The bottom part has the voltage battery indicator and I actually had to drill a hole for that. And then the top part, I used a oven stove knob to connect to the switch. I used some really strong epoxy glue to connect the stove knob to the trolling motor shaft. And I found using the glue gun was very helpful in mounting certain components, especially mounting that switchboard directly to the back of the housing. After you have everything all arranged properly, you just have to push down everything into that 4x4 junction box and there's a waterproof seal that goes around the whole thing. And there's four screws that you just need to tighten down and everything will be in there perfectly. The next thing that I did was use some electrical tape and finish off the bottom portion of where the wires come out of so no water could get in there. Then I finally painted the oven knob a nice acrylic white. I put three coats down and then I finished off the writing in some permanent sharpie so I can put the reverse speeds and the forward speeds on there. Here's what my kayak setup looks like. I basically extended the wire, like I said, by 7 feet. So if I want to have it anywhere in the front, it can move around to the back and front and I won't get stuck having to reach behind me. But I have it connected to the power center. The trolling motor is in the back. It's a 30 pound thrust trolling motor. And I have the controller up in the front where I'm sitting down at so it's easy to control my front and reverse speeds. Here's what the final product looks like. I have everything nice and tie wrapped and everything is ready to go. So now whenever I want to click on any of the speeds, it's nice and accessible to my right side and it's really easy to use, not bulky like my old trolling motor head that was in the way. So that's why I made it nice and compact and I can also see my voltage um, on the indicator as well. Here's what it looks like whenever I turn it on and that's it. That's it for today's video. If you want to check out more videos like these, I'll leave them in the link in the description below. But be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video, and as always, thank you all for watching.